Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, are they actually going to do the damn thing? I'll let you know the latest updates, and I'll also let you know whether you want to admit it or not, you enjoy this stuff. We all enjoy celebrity boxing. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Stay tuned. It's another edition of Tricky Guy Sports. It's your host, Brent Bilski, a.k.a. Double B. Sup? All right, we got some interesting things to get into today. NFL preseason, I got one good story. I got one good story I want to talk to you about. Got some funny videos as well. But I want to kick things off with right now in the middle of kind of the milieu of the sports world, I thought there was an interesting news report as the biggest fight of the century is apparently not going to happen. And I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg apparently will not be getting it on in Rome and Italy. And you can say what you want. And I want to lead off with this because this is an interesting time period, like I said, in sports right now anyways. I want to discuss the fact and something we need to accept. Celebrity boxing, MMA, all this stuff. You can say you don't like it. You can say it's a joke. You can say it's stupid. I'm even silly to bring it up. You know, whatever. That's dopey talk. That's dopey dumb dumb talk. You're only fooling yourself here. I, I don't know what to tell you. Celebrity boxing and celebrity MMA and just watching people fight is something that goes all the way back to the most, you know, as soon as we put people in an arena, you know, this goes back to gladiator days. As soon as we put people in an arena and said, hey, you know, what do you want to see? Let's watch things fight each other. Because the fact is... All you really need in a sports fans, you know, to get somebody's interest, the only things you need are intrigue and an outcome we don't know. Those are the, really the two things you need to get a sports fan's interest and to get my interest and to get John, you know, Q, six-pack public's interest. Give me an intriguing story and give me an outcome I don't know. Give me a story I'm invested in and an outcome that could go either way. I mean, uh, like I said, some of the sports I brought up earlier this year that had me fully intrigued and full, had me fully just engaged and, and just loving it was like the World Baseball Classic. World Baseball Classic was easy for me to understand. You, yeah, I wasn't the hugest baseball fan in the world, but you got Shohei Otani from Japan, who's supposed to be that dude. You know, I mean, now we know it, but you got to remember when the World Baseball Classic started last year, we didn't know yet. We, were, we had some ideas, and people were saying, hey, look, Shohei Otani is that dude. He's, the, he's Babe Ruth. He's, he's the greatest thing we've ever seen. He pitches, he hits, he does everything. So he's on Japan's side. They're in the final on one end. Then on the other end, we had the United States, and we had Mike Trout. It was the bottom of the ninth. It was two outs. So you had Shohei, Japan's Babe Ruth, versus Mike Trout, USA's Mickey Mantle, for all of it in the bottom of the ninth. By the way, Shohei hasn't pitched relief in like five years, but he's coming out to pitch in this final at bat against the guy who just happens to be his teammate, by the way, and he came down to a 3-2 pitch. Intriguing story. I didn't know what was going to happen. Turns out Shohei struck out Trout in one of the greatest sports moments I've ever seen. You, you, you look at the World Cup. I don't give a damn about soccer, but I lost my mind with a bunch of Argentinians because they sold me a story, an intriguing outcome, and an intriguing you know thing that I can understand. You had Lionel Messi. He's the GOAT. Maybe he could be the GOAT. There's also other arguments, but if he wins this World Cup, it'll kind of vault him to the top. Oh, by the way, the guy he's going against, he's French. We don't like the French. His name's Mbappe. He's young. So I had the old GOAT given one last chance, one last stand to kind of go Go ahead and see if he can do something to put himself and solidify himself at the very, very top. Then you had the young French people who I'm not rooting for because they're young and they're French and they got their future ahead of them. We don't like them. And it came down to penalty kicks. Messi's end up you know, scoring a couple goals. And the next thing you know, I'm losing my mind with a bunch of Argentinians about a soccer game that I could usually give two flips about. You give me a story. You give me a, a, you know, an outcome that I don't know what's going to happen. You have my attention and you have America's and just everyone else's attention. The fact is celebrity boxing matches and MMA fights both fill those needs. They give you an intriguing story. You know this one. You know this one. They don't like each other and they're going to get it on and we don't know who's going to win and god dang it this goes all the way back to like sixth grade when you found out that Johnny was talking crap about Steve and they're going to go meet in the back of the lunch yard and they're going to get it on. It's like wow well you know Steve and John they're about the same size when you know half the crowd going I think Steve's going to kick his ass. The other guy's going oh Johnny's going to go ahead and 
and stomp his head in. You don't know till you get there. So that's all you really need. And if you don't believe that this is a real thing and a real part of sports now, the joke's on you. I, I mean, just so you know, they're making more money and they're getting more paper b buys than anyone else out there. I just want you to understand that. Money, money, the money... money. Money, money, money. There's a reason it's not going anywhere, and there's a we- there's a reason that you're going to see it continue to excel and to go ahead and get more and more popular is because that's where our eyeballs are going. We really, you know, it's sad. There's guys that, you know, train their whole lives, and they go through all this, and they work their way up the right way, and it's really unfair, and everything else you want to say, fine. But the fact is, when it comes to what we want to watch in a fight, as long as you give us two people that we want to see hit each other and we don't know who's going to win, it doesn't matter if they're trained, It actually works out better a lot of times for the average person if they're just a general somebody that we all know. The fact is, celebrity boxing makes a ton of money, more than actual boxing does. I'm going to go ahead and give you these stats just so you don't think I'm just making stuff up. This is from 2021. This is the top all-time boxing match pay-per-view buys, meaning like this is the most eyeballs ever, the top 10 ever in boxing history. What has gotten the most pay-per-view people, the most people to say, damn it, I want to watch that fight. Here's my money. Do you understand that three of the top 10 are celebrity, quote-unquote, or like silly exhibition, excuse me, style boxing matches? The fact is we want to watch these people do this stuff. Number one is, of course, Floyd versus Manny. But after that, it was Floyd versus Connor, which was an unsanctioned MMA guy versus a retired boxer. The number two fight of all time, the most watched, happens to be an MMA guy and a boxing guy who was retired at that moment. No belts on the line. It was just curious to see because we all seen Connor knock people out in UFC. Then we saw Floyd Mayweather go undefeated, but he's a little bit smaller. He's never done this. You know, there was a lot of intrigue there. What's going to happen? We don't know. They sold us on the dream, and we ended up buying it. It's the number two most watched of all time. Then you go a couple more actual fights, Oscar versus Floyd, Floyd versus Canelo, Evander versus Tyson, Lennox Tyson. But then at number seven, you have Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr., Both of them way past their prime in an exhibition match that absolutely had no outcome. They didn't even announce a winner. But, I mean, if you weren't like me, glued to your seat, apparently it's the number seven most watched boxing match ever in history at 1.6 million pay-per-view buys. The fact is, it was just interesting. Roy Jones is finally old and heavy enough to where it kind of made sense from a weight-wise you know, idea to where Mike Tyson, who's always been a smaller heavyweight for as powerful as he was. But I mean, it's finally kind of what we considered a fair fight. You got Roy Jones, who had moved up and down and finally, you know, actually had a a heavyweight fight and had won against Iron Mike, both of them, but way past their prime. This wasn't like this. There was, again, no championship on the line, but God damn it, that was interesting. Roy Jones versus Mike Tyson was number seven. And then at number 10, Believe it or not, Jake Paul, Ben Askren, a YouTuber versus a not even that successful, I mean successful, but not, you know, John Bones Jones. This isn't Brock Lesnar over here. This isn't Randy Couture. This is Ben Askren versus Jake Paul was the number 10 most bought boxing match ever in all the boxing matches in all the worlds for all the titles and undefeated here versus undefeated that you can go everything you want there's only nine people ahead of jake paul versus ben askren for the most watched boxing matches of all time the fact is we enjoy this stuff what does that do? Does that blow your mind? We enjoy it. We it because it doesn't matter. It was interesting. Some little, you know, crap talking YouTuber versus a UFC guy, and we wanted to see the guy get knocked out. We wanted to see Jake get his up and comments, and instead he slept him after he had slept Nate Robinson and done some others. So there's as long as there's something there, you'll have our interest. That's a long explanation to bring up the fact that Elon versus Mark Zuckerberg is interesting, and if you say you're not going to watch it, you're a damn liar. If you were to tell me that, you know, Steve Jobs versus, uh, you know, Bill Gates, if Steve Jobs versus Bill Gates decided to get it on back in their heyday, the two tech giants, the ones richest men almost on the planet who had all this influence and had all this feuding and had two different tech companies going at each other, if you told me tomorrow as I'm walking down the street and I could be on my way to say like a wedding, you know, my wedding maybe, I mean, to be honest, and then you could tell me, hey, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates are fighting in the back. 
five minutes. You know, let, let me <laughs> let me just go see. I've always wanted to see these two fight. Let me see what happens if these two actually get it on. So to tell me that Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk getting it on is not interesting. You are lying to yourself, and I'm unfortunately here to tell you that apparently it is not going to happen. I am fully disappointed in this. I am not happy about this. I wanted to see this happen. I loved all the intrigue that they were starting to do as they were going back and forth. But yes, Elon Musk and Mark Mark Zuckerberg apparently is going to be a no-go as Mark has come out recently and said that this is basically done here. But yeah, I mean, here's even, I mean, there's so many AI photos I can show you. There's a million, there's videos, there's all sorts of stuff. I wanted to see these two fight. I did. I, I really, this was more interesting to me than, I mean, it was more interesting than the last match I just saw, the actual boxing match with the, the Texas kid getting his ass whooped, Spence, Spence Jr., I mean, it was fun to, in some ways to watch some poor guy get pummeled that wasn't supposed to, but I, that's something I'll, you know, I already forgot almost the names of the fighters. That I'll remember till the day I die. If I got to watch these two billionaire, you know, future changing, I mean, it, it's Bill Gates, Steve Jobs of, of, the, of the new era. Fight? And actually fight, fight? I, I'd, pay, I'd pay a lot of money to see that. But apparently it's not going to happen. Mark Zuckerberg apparently has shut the door on the cage fight as he released a statement yesterday. I'll go ahead and give it to you now. And I read. Metaboss says it's, quote, time to move on after Twitter owner fails to name date, says he needs surgery. Mark Zuckerberg is claiming that the Tesla boss, quote, isn't serious, as the rival billionaire tech bosses had seemingly agreed to brawl in June but when Musk Elon had tweeted that he was, quote, up for a cage fight. Cage fight. Nice. And then Zuckerberg had replied, send me the location. There had been a lot of back and forth. But now a statement coming out from Mr. Zuckerberg himself said on Sunday that, quote, I can think we all agree that Elon isn't serious and it's time to move on. I offered a real date. Dana White from the USC offered to make this a legit competition for charity. Elon won't confirm a date. Then he says he needs surgery and now asked to do a practice round in my backyard instead, which is really Really? I, I don't know if that's true. That's what that's what Mark's saying here. And that if Elon ever got serious about a real date in an official event, he knows how to reach me. Otherwise, it's time to move on. I'm going to focus on competing with people who take the sport seriously. And like I said, I mean, uh, Musk, by the way, just recently, though, had tweeted out that he wanted the fight. He got like, th this is what I'm saying. This is how like big these guys are. He got like apparently the Vatican to agree to have them like use the Colosseum in Italy. Like we're going all the way back. We're getting all the way up with all this AI and technology, yet we're going all the way back to our roots and watching two people just get it on in the gladiator arenas of Italy, of Rome, of the old days. I, mm, you got me. I, 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 I'm dropping $99.99 to see that. I'll, I'll donate to some charity. What, what do I got to do to make this happen? This is so unfortunate. But, yes, in case you missed it, Elon had tweeted out recently, and now I guess X'd out. Is that what we're calling it? He, he changed the thing to X, which I don't know. I, I guess I'll tell him it's an awesome nickname, even though I really don't agree. All right, you got me. That's an awesome nickname. But Elon uh, had X'd out, I guess, uh, quote, the fight will be managed by my and Zuck's foundations, not the UFC, and that the live stream of the fight will be on this platform and meta. Everything in camera frame will be in ancient Rome, so nothing modern at all. I spoke to the prime minister of Italy and the minister of culture, and they have agreed on an epic location. Then he went on to say, and I think he was hinting at, again, like the Colosseum or something. Thing. Um, everything will be done and pay respect to the past and present of Italy and all proceeds will go to veterans. And I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, you know, the Mark, Mark saying, I don't know who's chickening out here. I don't know who's, you know, why we can't get this done. This is so reminiscent. Even outside of like the boxing commissions, we still have a hard time. This is why the UFC is doing so well. The UFC boxing, if you want to know why it's kicking your ass consistently, other than when you have, like, you know, Spence Jr. And, and the other guys, two undefeated guys going at it in Crawford. Uh, if you don't have zero versus zero, you have no intrigue left in boxing because too many times there's too much bullshit. There's too much this and that. There's too much back and forth. This commission doesn't want to go with this one. This promotion doesn't want to go here. The reason the UFC does so well is because Dana White gives you the fight you want to see. If you want to see it, Dana gives it to you. He doesn't care. He understands. He comes from more of a fan perspective and in the end he's the emperor he's in control he has autonomy so if you ask for a fight dana gives it to you 
You know what I mean? You want to see Connor versus Nate? Cool. I mean, there's really no reason to do it, but F it. I know you guys want to see it. This is what eyeballs want to get their attention to. Boom. There it is. Boxing, we have to wait so long to get the fights that we want. Like, you know, you think of Floyd Manny. Uh, you know, the, at, by the time that it happened, Manny was not the Manny that he needed to be. When Floyd Canelo happened, I remember that one. Canelo was kind of young. There's always, you know, there's always something here, something there. I want this. I got to get that split. There's always a bunch of nonsense unfortunately when boxing comes around for the matches we want to see versus UFC just gives you what you want um I I'm shocked I guess in some ways but maybe not because let's face it these two don't do they really do they really want to get it on do Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk really want to get it on they don't like each other I know that I I I know as the two tech rivals again I'll keep going back to Jobs Gates this is very reminiscent of like Two guys both trying to get their stranglehold and their monopoly on. I'm the one who changed this world. I'm the one who owns this era. So they have, you know, competing tech companies that are down very similar avenues. They both have very similar, you know, as far as success levels and stories. But I, so I know there's, there's, uh, there's obviously some natural rivalry. And apparently they just truly don't really like each other. I mean, just even personality-wise, they're both very, you know, obviously narcissistic, egotistical types that, you know, all the, you know, love and attention should go my way. But both of them claim they can fight. Now, in case you don't know, Mark Zuckerberg does do jujitsu and MMA training. So, you know, in the tale of the tape, if this was to have happened, I think I got to go with Zuck. I mean, Zuck is younger obviously, and is also more MMA and jiu-jitsu trained, even though he's a little bit smaller than Elon. I'll give you the weights here in just a little bit, but in case you've never seen, Mark Zuckerberg, this is the guy doing jiu-jitsu. I mean, you know, he's not George St. Pierre, but he's got some training. You know what I mean? He could, he could, put, he could put Elon in that show, Cole. I wonder if he'd talk shit. I wonder if he'd be like, say Facebook's better. Say it's better. Mmm, slamming. I like it. Mark's got a little scrap to him. In the words of Mike Tyson, though, we don't know how he'd be when he gets hit in the face. That's my favorite Mike Tyson quote of all time. Everyone's a tough guy, or everyone... You, you never know who you are until you get punched in the face, I believe is the Mike Tyson quote there. But it looks like, you know, Mark can go, man. I mean, Mark has jujitsu training. They said he's actually won at certain levels in competition for, for what he's doing. Guys that are successful as him and Elon usually have that, you know, psychotic, obsessive, dedicating, you know, all that energy that they need to put certain places. So it really wouldn't surprise me that he at least wouldn't be well-trained and, and have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience and a lot of drive and passion to do it on the other side elon claims that while he's never actually and i think he's done some mma trading matter of fact i believe gsp had said out loud that he had worked with him and he really wasn't that bad that he has a martial arts background that he had done you know a lot of martial arts growing up and that he had gotten in a lot of actual fights when he grew up in south africa and uh, during that time he'd actually gotten into a lot of fist fights there it's hard to tell with both of them, and this is one of the hardest things to find out. This is why I would love to see and see them hit each other and find out how tough they actually are versus how tough they actually think they are. Because when you're that rich and you're that popular and you have that much, you know, everyone just kind of feeding off your teat, so to speak, it is so hard to not have the Justin Bieber-like sycophantic behavior of, it's hard to tell. Like, do they really get people to go against them? Uh, Mark does actually go to competition competitions. I wonder how structured or how whatever it is. I mean, I would think that they would have to go ahead and let that be an actual thing. But, I mean, the fact is, you know, like watching Justin Bieber, or I'm going to say it like, you know, former President Barack Obama play basketball, you could tell through Bieber's entourage or the Secret Service guard in Obama no one's really trying to check those dudes. If you go watch their old highlight reels, you know, quote unquote, of them playing basketball, both of them got a lot of room and a lot of, you know, I, I just don't know if either one was being fully defended. And in full defense of the president, I mean, the Secret Service, they got bigger fish to fry than prove that you can lock down Barack one on one here. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I get it. Like, you don't want to be hip checking the president a la Rob Ori, Steve Nash into a wall or something. It, you know, that one makes sense. Bieber also makes sense, again, because you're just you're just 
you're just some ass kisser on his payroll. Like you can't actually block a shot and be like, yeah, that's right, little bitch. Told you. You'd, you'd be on the bus home that, that day. Point being, this type of stuff, the video training of Mark, and then this was even worse. Elon Musk proven he was a tough guy on, I again, is it X now? Do we do we call it X Twitter? I, he went live, and just look at this. Look at this nonsense. Look at how much ass kissing he gets. The dude lifts a 45-pound dumbbell, which, I mean, is is heavy. Don't get me wrong. But they, they acted like he was Atlas. They, you know what I mean? They acted like he was, like, holding up the planet here. Look at, look at this nonsense. You get comments, too? So you okay. Comments, right? yeah. All right, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This is me uh, curling a 45. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, my God. There you go. <laughs> okay, it looks like our video feature is working better. Give me, give me a freaking break. And look at his face, too, at the end. Look at how, like, how cocky. This is what happens when you have too many people tell you that, you know, the most mundane of any sort of feat of strength is like, oh, my God, I cannot. 45 pounds. How is your arm not falling off of your shoulder blade? Elon Musk, you must be, you know, what... I mean, look! Oh, look at the face! Look at the face! Look! Look at Elon's grill here! Like, yeah, y'all get that on tape? Forty-five pounds, baby! I can curl it and I can press it. I mean, you know, whatever. So, point being, though, you know, Elon, and so you, if you need the tail of the tape here, fifty-one years old is six foot two. Weight is unknown. We, we apparently it's hard to find Elon's weight. I'm gonna guess. 240s if if I had to take a you know just a gander at it if I was working at a carnival somewhere. So I'll go ahead and say that Elon Musk at 51 years old is 6'2, 240. Now has no official fight experience, does say that he fought in South Africa when he grew up there and, and had some fights and some experience that way. Now Mark Zuckerberg is smaller, but he is also a lot more, uh, obviously, younger and more trained. Mark does have jiu-jitsu competition, MMA training, but he is, at 39 years old, only 5'8", a buck 54. So there's probably going to be an 80, 90-pound weight difference if these two actually decided to go to Italy to actually go through with this thing, do what they're doing for charity or whatever else. And you know what? That's great. Raise some money. I don't really give a damn. I just want to see my generation, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, go ancient Rome style and get medievals on each other other's asses and apparently i'm not going to see it and i'm pretty disappointed at this more disappointed than i am to find out of any of like the rematches in any boxing match going on there's really no ufc fight that's got me that intrigued these two fighting would get me all the way peaked just like whether you want to admit it or not all the ratings go that way the top three of all time top 10 paper pay-per-view buys are all by the way you know some sort of you know nonsense fight uh, in 2021, by the way, uh, Jake Paul, Ben Askren was number one. Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul was number three. And by and just to throw this in, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury that year was fifth. So it's not like we don't get into this and we don't enjoy this nonsense. I would have loved to have seen this. And maybe it'll still happen. Who knows? Maybe one of them, you know, maybe you can go back to the social media and one of them will call the other a bitch or something. Next thing you know, we'll actually get this fight going on. But the tail of the tape, you would have to go with Zuck, right? Like, you'd have to. I mean, the guy's younger and he does have some training. Elon apparently getting his ass kissed to the point of lifting a 45-pound dumbbell, according to the sick fans around him, is the equivalent of Arnold pumping like 500 shoulder reps. Nah, nah. You know, I, I don't know. But he does say he comes from a tougher upbringing than old Zuck did. You know, age sometimes doesn't matter. He does have the 80, 90-pound advantage. Again, I'm going to guess Zuck, or not Zuck, excuse me, Elon is like 230. You know what I mean? Something around there, 230, 240, if he's six foot two. Um, but again, man, if, if you know how to grapple and you, and you know how to do jujitsu and they're going to go ahead and do, quote, a cage fight, it's going to go to the ground. I mean, there's no way it's going to stay hand to hand very long. I, I don't I question both of theirs conditioning, especially Elon. So I don't think it'll stay. You know, anyone will tell you that if you get into an actual boxing match or any sort of real fight after 30 seconds, if you don't have major training, you are completely gassed. I, I would give it to Zuckerberg, but you never know. Hey, uh, Elon might be able to use his weight and, and use his advantage and maybe just catch him with an elbow. And maybe he is as strong as he pretends to be. Maybe he has actually been in some real fist fights in his life. And, and again, when two people really don't like each other, like these two don't, 
I don't know, man. I mean, I guess let me know what you think. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and go... I'm going to go with Zuck. I'm going to go with Zuckerberg with a rear naked. I, I think that Zuckerberg would take Elon Musk rear naked and take him from behind and go ahead and dominate him in front of everyone out there at the Coliseum in Rome. That's 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 my final call on that. I'm going to say Zuckerberg goes rear naked, dominates Elon from behind, and makes him his bitch in front of a bunch of people awkwardly in a ancient Rome-style cage match fight. I see him doing the damn thing. Elon might catch him, though. Elon might catch him. And again, that's what makes these these little these things intriguing. Um, quick, you know, it made me think of this, and I'm going to get to uh, the nicest sports story I have from the NFL preseason for week one. But I did want to mention, there are some, by the way, other ones I would like to see. Um, you know, the, since, since this is becoming a thing now, since we're seeing celebrity boxing and celebrity MMA become an actual, like, event, and again, outdoing the real, actual fights between contenders and championships and, you know, people actually relevant to the sport, since we seem more interested in this stuff half the time anyways, some of the ones I would like to have seen personally or still maybe would hopefully see at some point, for one, I want to see Joe Rogan and Will Smith. Let me, let me throw this in here. I just want to throw these in because I actually looked at a few. These are a few that I had picked out that I think actually weight and age and experience-wise actually could or should have been a fight at some point. I'm going to throw this in as honorable mention here. I would have loved, loved to have seen this. I would have loved to have seen Joe Rogan and Will Smith get it on after Will did that little slap heard around the world of poor Chris Rock there. I would have loved to have seen Joe as the defender of comedy, which whether he wants it or not, has kind of become his moniker after Carlos Mencia, a.k.a. Menstelia, had been obviously stealing jokes and using them for his own benefit and gain. Joe was the only one, even though it was well-known in the comedy community, in case you don't know this backstory. Back in the day when Mencia was, had the mind of Mencia and he was a really big deal, he was stealing jokes, and it was well-known in the comedy community that he was stealing jokes, but it was kind of a, you know, comedians are not confrontational, usually aggressive type guys. And so he was getting away with it until this bald psychopath showed up and called him out live on stage at the comedy store and basically destroyed Mencia's career. Mencia never recovered from the absolute just decimation Rogan did to his character. He did not let it go. He was going on radio interviews, confronted him personally, did everything he could to let the world know that Mencia was stealing. And next thing you know, Mencia went from the number one show in Comedy Central, went all the way back home, and I think does like, you know, rooms of 50 to 100 people now. I mean, Joe Rogan knocked his ass out of the comedy world, and he had a lot of problems, obviously, what Will Smith did at the Oscars, slapping poor Chris Rock there. And I think Will still, you know, owes us something for that, because his apology was nonsense. Will Smith's apology is one of the worst apologies I've ever heard in my life. Um... But Joe can fight. And this is the only reason I want to see this one. The only reason I'll call it honorable mention is because I think Joe would beat the snot out of Will Smith. If you don't know, Joe Rogan doesn't just talk about UFC. He's not just a commentator for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. This dude is MMA trained and kicks like a mule. Joe Rogan can kick your head off. Don't, don't get it twisted. Do not heckle Joe too much if you go to his new mothership uh, comedy place out there in Austin, Texas. Joe Rogan will whoop your ass. I don't know if you've ever seen this, him kicking a heavy bag. This is Joe Rogan, like 50 years old. Look at this dude roundhouse. Thwack. Dude, I think that that's a heavy bag, man. That's not That's not as easy as that looks. Oh, he's kind of pushing when he kicks or whatever. That's a roundhouse full twist kick with all the torque and force of a damn donkey. Uh, if he landed that to your face, you're going night-night. I, I, I hope you know that. If Joe Rogan landed that all the way, spun around, and was able to give you that roundhouse to the grill, you are going to sleep. If you think I'm lying, you need to see the original. He never, I guess, fought much after this. He actually almost kicked some poor dude's head off. He almost turned the poor bastard into a giraffe. In case you don't ever have seen this clip, this has kind of made the rounds. But Joe Rogan, when he was young, again, was, you know, he was into this, man. It's not like he just picked it up later and kind of did it as a hobby. He started off in karate, jujitsu, martial arts of some type, and he was at some exhibition. And when I say he put homeboy to sleep, have y'all ever seen this? You ever seen Joe knocking a dude out? Do not heckle Joe Rogan too much. Look at this. The film's kind of grainy. But watch it one more time. That same roundhouse kick that went against that heavy bag. 
as I tried to point out, that's not a joke, man. One more time. Boom. One kick to the head. Look at this poor kid. I mean, dude, he, he hurt this boy. I mean, I don't even want to make too many jokes. That kid is not having a good day. I, he really effed him up with that kick. So, yes, it probably wouldn't be a fair fight, as even though Will Smith, I know, has played Ali and played a tough guy in a lot of action movies. Joe was actually trained. I would still love to see it, though, in celeb fights that I would actually like to see happen. I would love to see Joe Rogan beat the crap out of Will Smith. Tale of the tape, by the way, isn't really that. I think you can make this actually happen. Will Smith is 48 years old, six foot two, but he's 181 pounds, last listed I could find. Joe Rogan, 55 years old, is only five foot eight, but he's been listed anywhere from 185 to 195 pounds. He's a little Tyson kind of stocky looking dude. So we can get a catch weight, I think, of 185 easy. I think we can get a catch weight of 185 easy to do this. I think Joe's moved on. He's kind of Buddhist and peaceful like me a little bit. He doesn't always, you know, hold those grudges that long. Will Smith, I don't think, would want anything to do with it. But that's the one, at least honorable mention, I'd like to see. Actually, fight, fight for real fight if there was an actual possibility for it to go down. Although I still think Joe Rogan would just roundhouse kick Will's head off. And uh, that would be pretty interesting there. Um, I also, just uh, a couple more I want to throw in here. The Paul Brothers uh, in case y'all missed this, the Paul brothers have been fighting. It, it's so hard to tell as far as what's real and what's fake with them. It, it, it's just, you know, they they understand social media and how to use it, how to manipulate it. But recently they were on Impulsive together. This is right after Jake Paul, who, by the way, knocked out another UFC guy. And I think did a very good job job against Tommy Fury. You can say what you want about Jake Paul. He is a grade-A douchebag. No one really likes the guy. And, and I understand it. I mean, the kid kind of sucks. But he's getting a little more mature, I guess. And, I mean, he beat he beat Nate Diaz fair and square. Like, he, he put him on his ass for real. There's only so many UFC guys that Jake Paul can sleep, and you keep claiming that it's fake or it's this or it's scripted. These guys aren't that smart, and they're not that great at actors. In case you didn't see it, I'll just give you real quick the KO. Oh, drop some. Right here. This is just called a fadeaway hook. Boom. Mm. Right there. Lovely timing. Beautiful timing right there. And he used Nate Diaz's own momentum against him. Yep. Yeah, I mean, look at that. First of all, Nate Diaz does not, not to, he has too much pride to go out like that. Nate Diaz would not be part of a conspiracy or a fixed fight to where he's literally going to be like he was at the ropes at this point, ass up, stumbling out of the ring. That's embarrassing to a dude like Nate Diaz, especially from a damn YouTuber. So this idea that this was all scripted or this is all nonsense, how many people can he put to sleep before we start going? This kid has punching power for real. Like Jake Paul actually has punching power for real. I mean, that's a solid left hook, man. And that's a UFC guy, a tough guy, a guy who's been hit in the face multiple times by power punchers like Conor McGregor and others and was able to take it a lot better than he took that. I mean, he went Duh, out of the ring. And you could say he was out of shape or whatever else. The fact is, your chin's your chin. And Jake can knock your chin down, man. His brother, you know, obviously has never shown the knockout power in Logan but he does, he's the older brother, he does have the weight advantage and the two getting it on. And so I'll show you this real quick. This was from their podcast. They were bitching back and forth and kind of getting on each other's nerves. They have said openly that they would never actually do it. I have a question after this I'll show you, and then we can go ahead and discuss the reason I think that uh, at some point they may have to do it. But this is Jake and Logan on their podcast arguing. Brought a prime bottle to the stadium. That's ridiculous dude yeah get over it dude, meanwhile come on, me i'm your brother building a oh business. yeah you, you're my brother building who's, a business you love to play both sides who's bro. healed what's the, what other you side play both sides what other side am i playing you play both sides what's and it's the like other? you want to partner with dana white and ksi my life is all... my life your life is your life i'm gonna take these opportunities when we as brothers no longer become additive to each other and it feels like you or I are trying to take from one another. Well, when it's convenient for you, we're brothers, but then when it's not, you do the exact opposite of like, we are completely separate, so like, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do as well. I don't know if I always have to yield and bend my personal ways because we are brothers and that's the sole reason. So obviously the intrigue, now again, both these guys, whether you like it or not, have topped pay-per-view buys over the last few years in boxing matches. They just have. I, 
I, I don't know what to tell you. Again, Jake was number one in 2021. He's number 10 of all time versus Ben Askren. Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather was right behind them at number three in 2021 with a million pay-per-view buys. Again, both of them almost doubling the results of the Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury three fight that happened in the same year. But the issue that I, that I wonder is that do either one of them against as far as like brother versus brother is the intrigue there because usually the reason we watch them is because we want to see them get knocked out like we want to see them get beat up so if you know if a tree falls in the forest does anyone hear it if two douchebag brothers knock each other out does anyone care i i don't know i i'd be kind of interested i mean I, I i they said they won't do it Maybe this is, you know, they're building, you know, Logan is in WWE now. He does understand how to build a storyline. Maybe that's kind of where the, they're they're going with this here. But, um, I mean, they're pretty similar in weight, and they both obviously have boxing experience, and it would be, it's, I'd watch it. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'd watch. I, I, I wish I could lie to you and say I wouldn't, but I, I clearly would. Um I, I would think you'd have to give it to Jake. I think Jake would probably knock Logan's head off if if I'm being honest as far as skill set and just overall experience at this point goes. Logan really would have to rely on the fact he does have skill set. He is a great athlete. Logan is an amazing athlete, has some boxing experience going against Floyd Mayweather, the greatest of all time, although there was an obvious size difference there. Um, and also just has the fact he's the older brother. You know, like little brother, older brother syndrome sometimes can be prevalent all the way through you know, your entire lifetime's there. I, you would think Jake would knock the brakes off of Logan I, I, as far as where they're both at in their boxing career. And maybe that'll finally be enough if enough people say that for them to actually get it on. I'd check it out, though. I'd check it out. So we'll, we'll check that out in the future. Maybe that'll be the undercard for the Elon. That This would be cool if I could create. And so I'm if I can create my whole card here, my whole fight card, I mean, I think I would open with Joe Rogan, Will Smith, and then I would, you know, probably go to the, yeah, the Paul Brothers fight. You know, actually, I would make them a co-main event. You know who I would make right after the Will Smith-Joe Rogan fight would be full, uh, Floyd Mayweather versus 50 Cent. I, I, I know that they're cool now and they've kind of gotten over their beef, but damn it, no one beefs like 50. 50 Cent and Floyd Mayweather did not like each other for a very long time, and it made for some very, very funny stuff, as you just don't want to mess with old uh, 50. Fiddy, Fiddy's that guy, man. Fiddy will troll you to death. Fiddy knows how to get out and be the aggressor in, you know, the headlines. And I don't even remember what the falling out was. But, I mean, when this was a couple years back. Uh, do you remember when 50 really got on Floyd's ass? I, I thought this was hysterical when he uh, was – this is during the ALS challenge. I got to play this for you because this was just too great. When 50 just really was going after Floyd Mayweather. I would have loved to have seen these two actually try to get in a ring and settle the damn thing. This is a special A-S-L-E-L-S -E challenge for you, Floyd. If you can read one full page of a Harry Potter book, nigga, I'll give 750000 to whatever charitable organization you want to. Fuck the bucket ice, man. I got a phone call from my man, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy said if Floyd accepts the challenge, then he'll put it on the actual show. So you can read it on the show. We don't want to put pressure on you. We know you can't pronounce those words in that Harry Potter book, so we're going to let you read Cat in the Hat. <sighs> I never learned to read. No one quite does it like 50 there. So, yes, by the way, Floyd does um, struggle with the reading. I, I don't know if you all ever have heard or seen this was on uh, The Breakfast Club, apparently. I don't know if Floyd pissed them off, too, or whatever, but they leaked the audio of poor Floyd trying to read a um, like what they call like a, a, a little 30 second, like a little or a drop is what they call it, like a 15 second drop. As uh, let me see if I have the yeah Floyd versus fifty here uh, in a in a happier time. But it, but in case you never heard it, this is off the Breakfast Club. I'll play this real quick. Uh, you know I'm running. I'm I'm looking at the time here. I'm gonna have to get rolling in just a second. But this was fun. So they released this a while ago, and it's kind of rude to bring it up. You know, way later in the future. But whatever. I got a couple minutes. This was uh, again. They was this is the actual thing they were supposed that Floyd was supposed to read. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined iHeartRadio for the Show Your Scribes movement to support hiring vets. Go to showyourscribes.org, a website that connects veterans with employees and helps business find candidates with the best training. All right, blah 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 blah. When Floyd tried, it didn't go so. Well. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I, I've, I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio. For the show, your stripes, your, okay. I'm Floyd Mayweather, 
and I've joined Heart Radio for the show, Your Stripes Movement to Support Hiring Vets. Mm. I'm Floyd Mayweather, mm. and I've joined Heart Radio for the show, Your Stripes Movement to Support Hi. Okay. I'm Floyd. Mayweather. All right, I'll stop. It's it's just brutal, but yeah, that's why Fifty when he came out with that, I knew that was that was just brutal because again, he's I just never learned to read. Floyd's Floyd's a lot of things. He's just not maybe the greatest, uh, you know, orator or, or narrator as it were of all time. I, I, I don't know if he's going to be yeah doing voiceover work anytime in his future, but uh, yeah. So when Fifty dropped the whole, you know, I'll donate a million dollars if you read a Harry Potter book, mother. <laughs> I thought that was just uh, chef's kiss trolling. And again, weight and height would be a little bit of an issue if Floyd and 50 actually fought, even though I think they, again, they've smoothed things out here. But I did look it up. You know, 50 at 47 years old is 5 foot 11 or 6 foot, depending on who you ask, 207 pounds. Um, Floyd Mayweather obviously is 5 foot 8 and only like a buck 50. But Logan Paul, you know, has a carrying weight of like 190 pounds at like six foot tall. And, you know, Floyd did fight and defeat Logan Paul. So, you know, I guess at least there's, you know, maybe, you know, 50 could agree to lose a few pounds. Floyd could, you know, try to bulk up a little bit. Unfortunately, it looks like that they've they've squashed that beef, but I would have loved to have seen it. It would have been very interesting to me. Let me know, you know, as far as what you think would be some interesting celeb fights. But, uh, you know, besides the fact that Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are apparently, you know, flirting with not getting it on anymore. If I was to make my card of my new celebrity boxing matches that I'd actually want to see, obviously it's going to be headlined by Elon versus Mark out there in ancient Rome, but I would open with Will Smith versus Joe Rogan. I got Joe Rogan knocking his head off in like 30 seconds, but it would still be hysterical and revenge for comedy. Then I would have, uh, again, 50 versus Floyd in what would be an interesting back and forth there and would probably go to Floyd in decision as 50's probably going to run out of gas. Then I would let the Paul brothers be the, you know, underneath the, the second card there. And I'm probably giving that to Jake in a knockout, if I'm going to be honest, third or fourth round. And then the headliner with everyone watching, I would have Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg with exactly the stakes they want, an MMA fight in Rome, ancient Colosseum, the entire world watching, two tech giants, the richest men in the world possibly, or at least close to it, getting it on. I say Mark Zuckerberg gives him a rear naked and dominates him from behind and is able to win that way. So that is my four lineup pay-per-view card that I think would sell at least 10 million pay-per-view buys. At least 10 million pay-per-view buys. All right, so there you go. Celebrity boxing, whether you like it or not, celebrity MMA, whether you like it or not, is a part of this world. It's going to be in the continued future. Hopefully, the billionaires can get their thing going, but we'll see. If not, there's always going to be some other idiots getting it on, and you'll be watching just like I will. Hopefully, you'll be watching next time. I got to go.